If your phone takes decent pictures, but you still feel like something's missing, maybe it's not you. It might be your camera app. Today I'm diving into the brand new Project Indigo from Adobe. But this one's completely free, so far. Alongside the best alternatives for iOS and Android. We'll break down features, show side-by-side -side results, and help you choose the right camera app to unlock your phone's full photo potential. And if you want to really up your game, I've got a free smartphone photography course waiting for you. The link's below. QRC code right here. You can point your iPhone to it if you're not watching this on your iPhone. It even includes a downloadable guide comparing all these apps in detail. So let's get into it. Your phone's default camera app is like a polite robot. It does what it's told, but doesn't ask questions. Most people never explore beyond it. But if you care about sharpness, control, or capturing tricky lighting, you're missing out. Default apps prioritize speed and ease, not customization. Third-party camera apps give you manual control, shutter speed, ISO, focus peaking, and raw shooting. Especially helpful in low light, motion scenes, or HDR situations. Let's talk about the new kit on the block, Project Indigo by Adobe. It's not a Photoshop clone with a shutter button. It's thoughtful, stripped down, and smart. It's just a great camera. Often when you take a picture with the Project Indigo camera, it will take up to 32 images at the same time. It then uses those to get the very sharpest, very best photo that you can get. Some key points, it's available for iOS only for now. I expect that that will probably change in the future. Prioritizes intelligent defaults using Adobe's imaging expertise to optimize your shot without overcomplicating your settings. Raw and JPEG capture. Now this is a big issue. I've talked about it in the past and I talk about it in the smartphone photography course, the value of shooting in RAW. But with Project Inifgo, you can capture in both RAW and JPEG at the same time. Smart presets for portrait, night, HDR, and macro. Seamless bridge to Lightroom and Photoshop if you edit with Adobe. Pros, clean, modern interface less intimidating than other pro apps. It's ideal if you already use Lightroom or Photoshop. Cons, limited manual control, no direct ISO or shutter tweaks yet. What if Indigo isn't your flavor or you're on Android? Here's what I recommend, depending on your needs. Want full manual control? On iOS, Halliday Pro is a great option. I find it worth it for total control over the image. It's intuitive. It has focus peaking, which shows you where you're actually focusing on the image. Raw images. For Android, ProShot or Manual ca Camera 2 give you deep control and raw histograms. For both Android and iOS, Adobe Lightroom Mobile actually includes a camera mode, it's, and it's excellent for editing. Now, don't get me wrong, default apps have come a long way. The iPhone's built-in app is pretty darn smart. Google Pixel's app also excellent computational photography. Use default if you want speed and simplicity. If you're just taking a quick selfie, by all means, use the standard camera app. It'll do a great job for that. You don't shoot in RAW or care about advanced controls? Well, come take the smartphone photography course. I guarantee you're going to want to shoot in RAW once you do that. Your phone has solid computational photography though, if you're not shooting in RAW. iPhone, Pixel, Samsung, Galaxy, all have great default functions. Here's Another little tip, I've recommended RAW many times, but you really only need it for photos that you plan to edit. In my case, it's 80% of the pictures I take, but I like editing my photos and you'll see why as you get into this course. But you don't need RAW if you're just taking pictures with the default app and you don't plan to do any editing. So set the default app to just capture in JPEG and set your optional additional app for true control to have RAW mode or to record both RAW and JPEG. 
Skip your default app if you want artistic control or shoot in tricky conditions. So which camera app should you use? Here's my advice. If you're brand new to this, start with Project Indigo or Lightroom Mobile for your iPhone. They're friendly but powerful. If you've already dabbled in selecting manual controls, give Halliday or ProShot a whirl. And if all this makes your head spin, don't panic. That's exactly why I built a free smartphone photography course for beginners. It walks you through how to get stunning photos no matter what camera app you use. You'll even get a downloadable comparison guide with all these app features. Your phone camera is already better than most point and shoots from 10 years ago. So let's make it a real camera. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe and drop a comment. If you have an app that I haven't mentioned that you prefer, I'd be happy to check it out if I haven't already. And don't forget, join the free course community. Even if you're not going to take the course, the free community is a great place to ask questions about photography, about technology, or just to chat with others that have similar interests. It's a fun place. We're all learning together, and you're absolutely invited.